Hey, it's the Analytics Dude, and I'm back today with another tutorial on doing data science and analytics without coding using the Nine platform. Today we're talking about one of my favorite things to do in the data exploration phase, and that's grouping. If you want to learn the analytical skills that make a difference in your career or business, please make sure to subscribe so you keep up to date with all future content. I've got lots of content upcoming on machine learning without coding and other stuff using the Nine platform, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future updates. Grouping is powerful because almost every data set will have one or more variables that you can think of as categories. Could be customer segments, could be time periods, could be promotion events, it's literally countless the number of things that could be a category. What I like to do is then group by those categories and look at the numerical variables that we're measuring or analyzing and see how they react to those different categories. This is how you can get things like sales over a time period or profitability by customer segment. Obviously, these are probably not the final variables we're going to use or final values that we're going to use, but they do give us a really good start into where we want to look, where we can make the most impact. If you've ever used SQL, you would know that group by is incredibly powerful in your queries and also easy to use. Nine treats the group by node a little differently. It's absurdly powerful, way more so than SQL. And I doubt that I'll ever even use half of its capability, but it's also not quite as easy to use as it could be. Now let's dive into the software. I can show you how to do some simple but impactful groupings in Nime, and then also show you how you can deal with some of the confusion of the more complex queries later on. The first step in grouping data is you actually need to have data to group. So what I did was I took uh, the CSV reader node and I read in a file that I'm using for future tutorials on the uh, Kaggle house prices. So um, if you haven't seen that yet, you know, please check that out if, it, if it's out by the time that you see this video. Now, this is the data that we're looking at here, and as you can see, it's kind of a mess. There's a lot of different columns, and this is exactly the sort of thing where group by comes in handy. So this is about housing sales data. So you got a lot of stuff here, but we're mostly concerned with predicting the price. So you see sale prices over here, it's an integer column. We also have year sold. So an interesting thing we might want to look at is, you know, does the year sold matter in terms of the housing prices? Well, I mean, looking at the years here, we got 06 through 2010. Uh, 08 is when the housing crisis started in America. So there's going to be some effect there. So it'd be interesting to look at how it groups that way. So what we're going to do is we'll, we have our CSV reader node. Look at our workflow coach right there. Group by node is right up for us. So we'll double click on that. It automatically connects it and double click to configure. And so these are the available columns, every column we have. And then this is the columns where it's grouping by. So I'm going to group by the year sold. Move that over, hit OK, and then we'll run grouping. Oop, execute, and now let's group. Now what does it give back? It only gives back the year sold. Basically, I didn't tell it what to group. So it just showed me the various things that happen inside that group. So these are the five years of data. Actually, sometimes that's worthwhile too, just knowing the, uh, the full shape of the data there. So let's give it something to group by, or rather something for it to group. So we want, said we want to talk about sale price. So sale price is right here. We're going to add that in um, and we can use the average. So there's a billion different things in here. This is where I talked about, like, I don't think I'll ever use, you know, even 50% of the stuff. So let's say, you know, you can, you have concatenation, you can do correlation, you can see the kurtosis of it. Um, let's go with two different things here. Let's go with the mean and let's do the same thing and same uh, variable. Let's look at the median and see how those change. That you know could be interesting here. Reset in the nodes. Beautiful. We'll execute, and now we'll group. Okay. So we see you know by the year sold in order, the mean, and then the median house price. So the average is of course higher than the median, which makes sense because you you're gonna have some you know very expensive houses. Um, and then you know what trend do we see here? Well you know it went up from 06 to 07, then 08 when the housing crisis started it went down. Um, Quick little blip up in 2009, but 2010 back where it was, um, and you'll see the median price was actually pretty steadily falling. So, you know that that was more or less what we'd expect to see. But it's nice that we can use the group by to come up with that view rather quickly and rather easily. So after we did that, you know, quick grouping on just the one column the year sold, let's try to do something slightly more advanced and group on two different uh, categories. So we're going to do it on the year sold and the number of bedrooms in the house. Well, here's the thing, because the number of bedrooms is above where the year sold was, it's gonna come in above the year sold. And we can't reorder these. It's going to sort based on bedroom first and year sold second. There's nothing we can really do about it in the group by node. Let me show you what I mean. See, the number of bedrooms first and then the year. Well, that just looks kind of clunky to me. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted to do it by year first. So what are my options here? Well, I can use the column resorter 
to resort and um, move the year sold above the bedrooms, in which case it'll come in above it. So move that all the way up. It's going to take a little bit here. And then up. Awesome. Apply. Okay. And then I got to check on this one too. So year sold above. Perfect. Run them both. And we get sorted by the year and then the number of bedrooms. Okay. So that's option one. That's the first way that we can do it. The second way that we can do it is if we get rid of that, reset this one to how it was. Imagine that never happened. See, bedroom above ground is back on top of there. And then we can do the column resorter afterwards. So you put the column resorter afterwards. But here's the part. It's going to require different steps. See, it's much easier to move your sold above it right there. Apply, but we're going to need to do another step, and I'll show you why. When we put it out here, it does the year sold. It puts the column first, but it's not ordered by the year sold. It's still ordered by the number of bedrooms. So then we need to use another thing. We need to use the sorter. And so the sorter is going to redo it by the row. And so we're going to sort by first the year sold, then by the number of bedrooms. Apply that. Execute that. And voila, we have the exact same result. Uh, you can do whichever one makes the most sense for you, um, but those are the two different ways of doing that. You know, very common thing, but you know, really just comes as a part of the SQL query. Uh, I wish Nine made this a little more easy and a little more intuitive, um, but at the end of the day, you can still do everything you want to here. There are lots of other options inside the group by. Um, such as the pattern-based aggregation, the type-based aggregation. I'm not going to get into those now, um, honestly, because I don't think I'd really use them for much in the way of anything, but they can be quite powerful. And I'll include a link to a tutorial where somebody does go over uh, those various uses uh, in the link below. So that was group by. What do you think? Powerful? Somewhat easy, but not quite as intuitive as it should be on the Nine platform. Nevertheless, it remains a cornerstone of what you need to do for data exploration. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have suggestions for future content, uh, let me know. Stay tuned. I have more stuff upcoming, more stuff planned. And uh, as always, if you got anything from this, please like this video. Subscribe to stay updated with more content. And above all, thanks for watching. I'm the Atlantics Dude. Until next time.